started looking at uh, the implementation of analog to digital converters. And we looked at uh, two possible architectures. Essentially, an analog to digital converter implements, uh, implements the rounding of the input voltage with respect to some reference, right? So the characteristics will look like this. So this is the example of a three bit or an eight level analog to digital converter, okay? And there is a certain range of voltages. I have not defined exactly what it is. I'll do that later, but I'll call that VREF. That is divided into as many pieces as there are levels. And you identify each sub range with one of the integer outputs, okay? So that's what an analog to digital converter is. And we identified uh, two possible architectures. One is, of course, you can see that essentially what you need is comparison with these levels, right? There are these transition levels of the A to D converter. These are what define the characteristics of the A to D converter. So the input has to be compared against every one of these in some way, effectively, to see exactly which sub range it uh, lies in. So one of the ways of doing it is simultaneous comparison with all of the transition levels, okay? So that means that for an n bit ADC, we have two to the n minus two to the n minus one transition points or transition levels. So you simultaneously compare with all of these, okay? And for that, obviously, you need two to the n minus one comparators. And, but the point is, this gives you the result in a single step, and it's used for very rapid conversion when you don't have too many levels, okay? And such an architecture is known as a flash analog to digital converter, okay? <clears throat> So typically confined to less than seven bits and very fast. In fact, it's the fastest technique that we. Given that this is so expensive in hardware, that is the number of comparators, we would like something more efficient. And for that, we realize that, hey, we don't have to compare with all of them simultaneously. You can do them in sequence. And even when you do it in sequence, you don't have to go one by one. You do it in a binary search way. And that gives you a whole number of uh, different architectures. But essentially, in doing binary search, for instance, you could have only one comparator and you need n steps for n bit conversion. In each step, you decide which half of the subrange it is in. Each comparison depends on the result of previous comparisons. Okay? So that way, in n steps, you can get to n bit accuracy. Is this okay? These are the basics. And it turns out that this leads to a number of architectures. One of them we will study now. Any questions about this? So yesterday we elaborated on this binary search. In step one, essentially, what do you compare? Vi minus Vf by two. 
and this gives you b n minus 1 i am assuming okay let me not make it abstract let me just say let me talk about a 3 bit converter so this will be b2 so 3 bit converter means that the output has 3 bits b2 b1 b0 okay <coughs> so the first comparison gives you the most significant bit right because it tells you which of the half ranges it is in the second comparison you compare vi minus b2 times vref by 2 this basically says that if it's in the upper half range then you have to go to the upper sub range otherwise the lower one also minus okay this gives you b1 if this is greater than 0 b1 is 1 if this is less than 0 b1 is 0 and then in the third step this gives you b0 is this is okay and in general you have an n bit converter output will be of the form it has n bits right the first step gives you what ha huh? the most significant bit again okay bn minus 1 the second step gives you bn minus 2 so this should be bn minus 1 and so on and the nth step gives you what is here We have divided by what? The last one. Two raised to n. Yeah. And this gives you b zero. Okay. Is okay. Fine. <clears throat> so, in every step, you compare VI with some threshold. Okay, and that threshold is variable. It is dependent on the step and the previous results. Okay, and what is that threshold? It is that one, right? That's the expression for it. okay i'll call it some vth that's the threshold of the comparator and the threshold is in general i am showing this expression from the last step but exactly the same one will hold with the different values of uh, bk right the bit value okay so what is this the threshold is a function of it is proportional to vref right vref is so just like the scale factor of the uh, converter and it is it is a function of the bits bn minus 1 to b1 okay so 
what is this function really the output is the threshold voltage v threshold and the inputs to this function are okay and the scale factor is v run okay what is this function the inputs are bits and the output is a voltage the digital to analog converter right essentially that's what we are using so in fact this gave us an excuse to study digital to analog converters as well at least in principle so essentially the threshold voltage is some analog quantity and what does that analog quantity depend on it depends on some bits okay in this particular a to d it happens to be the previously resolved bits but in general it is dependent on some bits okay in fact instead of writing it like this i could also have b zero here and for the sake of uh, the use in the binary search converter we will set b0 to 1 okay but in general digital to analog converter this is abbreviated as a dac this is what the output is the output of a digital to analog converter would be i'll show this b0 also we can set it to whatever value we want later okay you understand i mean this is an independently useful block we got it while in the process of making the binary search analog to digital converter but this is a useful block by itself right when you have a digital word that is stored you have to convert it into an analog value and this is what you do if you have a binary digital word you have to binary weight the each of the bits the most significant bit naturally has the highest weight we ref by 2 and the least significant bit has the lowest weight we ref by 2 to the n okay and what will the characteristics look like here again i'll take a 3 bit example i'll assume that in this case the input is d in that is b2 b1 b0 the output is b out the input has eight discrete uh, levels right and the characteristic of the d2a converter is what is it what is the output for uh, the input digit being zero huh zero for input digit of one what is the output for a uh, input digit equal to one that is b2 b1 b0 is a binary digit representing one huh b ref by eight yeah it's a three bit example right so this n is three so we have b ref by eight and for two it is vref by 4 in fact let me just so that it's easier to draw i'll plot v out by vref okay that anyway makes sense everything is normalized to vref right if i divide this by vref vref goes away from this side and that's a function of just the bits Output is simply proportional to the input digit. That's all. And there is a scaling factor because the input is a number and the output is a voltage. There has to be a scaling factor, and that scaling factor is provided by this reference voltage called V ref. Okay. Now you can see that this is somehow embedded inside the binary search. 
analog to digital converter binary is a cdp right because the comparison level is the output of a dac output of a digital to analog converter and the input to that digital to analog converter depends on the output of the previous conversion cycle okay any questions here and this is useful by itself for instance if you have a digitally stored sine wave you could get an analog sine wave by passing it through a digital to analog converter is okay fine so let's see how to how would we go about realizing this how would we make this basically what i have is again let's uh, for drawing 3 bit is about the maximum that i can manage so these are the inputs the output is some way out which i defined earlier and vrf is some voltage that's available let's say i want to get that function okay for a 3 bit case okay so that's what we out should be so how would i give me some ideas how would i implement this what would i do summing amplifier what will i sum okay now where do b2 b1 and sorry this is b0 what do these things do these are digital signals huh they will they will control a switch okay so that's what you can do with digital signals so it will control a switch and you said summing amplifier and what should i sum ha huh? fractions of vrf okay how do i get that resistive divider okay so i get let's say whatever voltage you want then then what i want to sum like how many branches should be in the summation ha huh? 3 okay then next we switch between ground and fraction as prati what's the idea you have some different way of doing it hmm needs to be switched between so here i will introduce the switch symbol okay let me do it later so this should be your saying connected to vrf by what two and this one ground and this switch should be controlled by ha huh? b2 and this one by b2 bar okay so sometimes i mean i will start using the other i mean another switch symbol with a bubble here that means a logical inversion just like in an inverter so if i have this this means that when b2 is high this is off b2 is low it is on okay but anyway or i can write the inverted one how do i get vrf by 2 so again i mean i assume you have a similar scheme for the others also right what is this what is this voltage vrf by 4 and no no please don't stand here go away yeah so what is the what is what is controlling this which is b1 b1 bar okay and vrf by 8 i assume b0 b0 bar and i'll get uh, vrf by 2 vrf by 4 vrf by 8 from this resistive divider will it actually work 
You need a buffer because uh, if you draw current from that resistor ladder, it will change the voltage. Okay, and this will definitely draw current. Okay, you understand? I mean, if I I'll show it for V up by two. I have R and R, and I connect it here. When it is connected, it is drawing some current. Okay, so then I mean this is a summing amplifier. So then I will not. This will not be V up by two anymore. So what is the solution? Buffers. Ah, exactly. So that is a better way, right? So you should do this. What you should actually do, because what this current, this summing amplifier is summing, are the currents. Any way you can change the currents is fine. You can do that by either changing the voltage or changing the resistance value. Okay. This is connected to V ref. Okay. And let me say this resistor is R. So, what should be the uppermost resistor? What should be? Two R. Okay. Next one. Four R. Eight. Okay. So, the resistors themselves are binary weighted, and this will work. Only thing is, I mean, the output there is an inversion, right? You will get. And the negative voltage. If you put minus V ref, you will get a positive voltage. But that's okay. Let's not worry about that part. So this is a digital to analog converter, and many digital to analog converters do look like this. Again, there is a huge variety of uh, implementation, but essentially you have the most significant bit, which has a weightage of V ref by two. You have the least significant bit, which has a weightage of V ref by two to the n. Okay, V ref by eight in our case. So somehow or the other, you have to generate this ratio, right? So every digital to analog converter will have this. That is, you will have some current somewhere and a much smaller current, one over two to the n, n minus one times that current somewhere else. Okay, because that's simply to generate the different weights of the most significant bit and the least significant bit. And at least conceptually, the easiest thing is to have these binary weighted resistors, two R, four R, and eight R, and sum the currents. And we are summing them in a, a summing amplifier or a current control voltage source. So the output will be this. Rather, this will be negative of. Is okay. So that's one way of making it. There is time. We'll look at other ways of making this. One of the problems is if you go to large number of bits. What may this be a problem? You will need a very large resistor and a very small resistor, right? So like for instance, we have. Uh, 10 bits. You have to go from 2R to 1024R. So resistor ratio of a factor of 500. Okay. So that may be inconvenient. There are other ways of doing it, and probably you already know the answer. You may have seen it in some basic uh, circuits, or maybe even in JEE, right? There is a circuit in which the currents in some branches are binary weighted. What is that? You have not seen that? Hmm. Have you heard of R to R ladder? No. No, I've never heard of it. That's okay. If you haven't heard of it, but uh, I thought that used to be one of these 12 standard physics type of problems. Yeah. So not infinite. I mean, no. There is the infinite ladder problem. That is where you try to find the. Terminating resistor that makes it look like an infinite ladder. That's not what I'm talking about. I mean, this is also a sub sub case of that. What is the voltage here? Huh? Half? Why? Why is that? Everywhere you look at, essentially, 
they look here it is r uh, you look here it is 2r and this 2r and 2r in parallel is r so again you get 2r r 2r r so at this point you get v of y 2 here v of y what 4 and so on so voltage will be binary weighted what is this current there by there by 4r what is this current there by 8r so the currents are also binary weighted so instead of using the branches like i showed you could connect these two switches and then uh, connect it to the op amp and sum the appropriate number of them okay so maybe let's say this is bn minus 1 bn minus 2 all the way to b0 so you sum whatever is appropriate using switches i won't show the circuit now i mean that's easy to imagine but you can get the binary weighting uh without using large component ratio that's the, the currents are still in a big ratio right if you have 10 of these branches the first one will have some current the last one will have 1000 of the current okay or 1 by 500 of the current whereas the components themselves are there are only two values there is r and 2r okay so yeah it's related to that infinite ladder because you extend this to infinity and you will still get the same result right so that is sometimes used i won't get into that but the point is to somehow get the binary weighting okay by adjusting the component values you don't use weighting of the voltage itself you assume that there is a single reference voltage because if that changes or something because of loading nothing should change okay you don't want to use like 10 different voltage sources for a 10 bit converter right so what you do is you change the component values so that you get the current ratio is okay so that's how you make digital to analog converters and there are many other ways of doing it based on either this or the r to r ladder and yeah you can think of any other way of doing it okay hmm. yeah yeah we will get that yeah all good things to those way Yeah, yeah, we have to get to that, but I mean, this was a, this somehow fit into that naturally, right? Because in the the may, while making the binary search converter, we do need the digital to analog converter. So I took this detour. We'll get back to that. Okay. Summing amplifier where? Okay, so now it looks like I have no option but to actually show the circuit works. the way to use this is the following okay if these are connected to ground right the current here will be v of by 2r current here will be v of by 4r current here will be v of by 8r and those currents have to be summed and that's exactly what we were doing here right we generated the currents in different way but here we had vrf by 2r vrf by 4r vrf by 8r weighted by the bit so what we have to do is b2 bar you connect it to ground if it is b2 you connect it to the op amp similarly b1 bar you connect it to ground b1 you connect it there and this is connected to ground okay so you can see first of all regardless of whether b2 is 1 or 0 what is this voltage zero it's either connected to ground or virtual ground and let's assume the op amp is ideal for now okay so these node voltages and the currents in these branches don't change at all actually that's a very good thing regardless of the state of the switch okay now if it is uh, if v2 is high this current will flow through this and if v1 is high it will flow there and v0 is high it will flow there 
So the current that is flowing here is a weighted summation of V R F I two R, V R F I four R, and V R F I eight R, exactly as we want. So this circuit is known as R2R ladder, and there are actually a number of uh, digital to analog converters using the R2R ladder. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions so far? So we are on a somewhat long detour, but that's okay. We'll now do the digital to analog converter and then come back to analog to digital converter later. So digital to analog converter is conceptually even simpler than analog to digital converter. All you need is weighted summation of uh, some voltage or current. Okay, and the weights are simply the input binary bits and with binary weighting, right? Different bits are weighted differently. That's the meaning of binary weight. Okay. So let's go back to this simpler case, simpler implementation where I simply had, where I had this binary weighted resistor. Let's say I decided with a total cheap one, I don't want to spend money on op amp. So can I can I do something like this but without using the op amp? What is it that I want? Again, I want weighted summation, right? Can I get a weighted summation without using an op-amp? Yes or no? Can I get weighted summation of voltages without using an op-amp? How, how will I get it? Huh? Any linear circuit, actually. I mean, if I connect, if I have a resistor circuit and connect a number of voltages, uh, any voltage will be some weighted summation. You just have to decide the weights. Okay. So now I want to get the exact same thing. Okay, <clears throat> but I don't want to use op amps. I want to use only resistors. And of course, I have my reference voltage, a single reference voltage VRF. And, and I also have the input bits B2, B1, B0. How should I do this? There may be many ways, but what's the simplest way of uh, Using? I can't hear what you're saying. Gray code. Decoder. I didn't quite get how that's going to help us. I had V1 and V2, okay, and I had to get, let's say, alpha times V1 plus 1 minus alpha times V2. How would I get that? We have actually discussed these things in some other context. What's that? Two equal resistors. Why equal? Right, it's nicer if you do it with conductances. The weight for this is alpha 1, so this should be alpha g. And weight for this is uh, 1 minus alpha, so this should be 1 minus alpha times 1 b. Okay. Or if you want it in terms of resistors, this is r by alpha and r by 1 minus alpha. Okay. 
So this is for uh, weighted summation of two voltages. Our problem is similar, right? Of course, we have just one VRAM, but that can be switched in and out. And the weights, what do the weights uh, depend on? If this was not alpha G and this, what would the output be? What is the weightage for V1? R2 by R1 plus R2. So again, I think it is nicer and more intuitive if you write this. Okay. And what is the weight for V2? Okay. And if I add that, what will the output voltage be? First of all, here I'll get G3 and G3 by G1 plus G2 plus G3 times V3. Okay. And if I connect R4 here, only the denominator will change. We discussed this. I forget exactly when, but I think we have discussed this. Uh, uh, connecting a number of uh, resistance branches, perhaps while discussing circuit analysis. Or something. So, now what? What are the values of V1, V2, V3 available to us? VREF. We have just a single reference voltage, VREF. Everything is VREF. Only thing is we can either connect it or not connect it based on uh, some switching signal, the bits. Okay. <coughs> So what is V1? V1 I'll say is V2 times VREF. That is, if V2 is 1, it will be connected to VREF. Otherwise, it will be connected to 0. Similarly, this is V1 times VREF and this is V0 times VREF. Okay. And what should these fractions be? What should be the first one here? What should this be? Huh? Half. And what should this be? What should it be? 1514. And this should be 18. So just quickly tell me what should be G1, G2, G3, G4. Uh, you have actually three equations. One of them is a free variable. And that you can see because it's a resistor ratio. If you increase all resistors by the same factor, nothing changes. Okay. So what should be? How should you arrange? Any idea? Huh? What is half one fourth one eight and G one, G two, G three, G four should be half one fourth one eight one eight. Yeah. Basically these two have to be equal. Essentially I will say G2 is half of G1, G3 is one fourth of G1, and G4 is also one fourth of G1. Okay. So, how do we do that? This is controlled by B1. And with B1 bar, it is connected to ground. This is the first voltage. And I connect it to some R. To R. For R. And we also need another four. Okay. This will work, right? Oh, I think I messed up the notation. So this should be B2 and B2 bar, B1 and B1 bar, B2 
three zero and three zero one. Okay, and it makes sense. I mean, the least significant bit is connected to the highest resistance. It causes least change in current. The most significant is connected to the smallest resistance. It causes the causes the highest change in current. And we need this resistor to get that exact VF by two and so on. Okay, otherwise you will have some other weird scaling. So this is another way of uh, making a digital to analog converter, and now we don't even have an active component. So this may be preferable in some cases. That uh, op amp is good when you want to drive some load, but uh, that's not true in every case. So maybe this is fine. Okay. Any questions here? <clears throat> so as you can see, if you have uh, any component, I mean, in fact, so far we have used only resistors. It can be done with others also. Soon we will see an example with capacitors. By having these elements with uh, different values, basically binary weighted values, you can get a digital to analog converter. Any questions so far? So, what is now the binary search ADC? We have a comparator, just one, and here we connect. The comparator has to, the exact implementation of the comparator we won't go into, but the comparator has to compare VI and the other input should be something, right? It depends on all of the previously resolved bits, okay? So this comes from a digital to analog converter. This is the symbol for a digital to analog converter. By the way, maybe I may as well just introduce that. For some reason, these are the symbols that have been come up with. So one end of it looks vaguely like an op amp, denoting an analog signal, and the flat end is the digital output. And for a DAC, it's the opposite. So this DAC, and here, this has, again, let me show the bits. The bits come from a register, okay? Right? So this is BN minus one, BN minus two, and so on, okay? And this register is filled based on this decision. Okay. I mean, not necessarily serially, but I'll show it like this. Are you familiar with registers? I mean, it's a series of flip-flops you can write parallelly into it and so on, right? I will not get into the flip-flop level implementation, but I'll just say you have a register and want to write into the register at different stages. Or you can, in fact, tell me. The reference voltage of the DAC is VREF, okay? The DAC is driven from, the digital inputs of the DAC are driven from a register, okay? So for the first comparison step, what should be in the register? Hmm. One and all zeros. MSB should be one and all of it should be zeros. Okay. So 
So initially you set it to one followed by all zero. And based on the result, you update. So let's say I call it Y. The comparator output is Y. Okay. So how should I update that? Should I update now for the next step? <coughs> First of all, I should set bn minus 1 to be equal to y, right? Obviously. And then in the next step, I should take this bn minus 1, okay? Maybe I'll call it bn minus 1 hat, whatever I got from there. I should put that here, whatever I got there, right? And what should the rest be? Huh? So 1 and 0. And here I get some y. What is that? Maybe I should throw it as an assignment. What should this be? This is the resolved value of bn minus 2. So in step number 3, and then 1. So essentially, you go from the MSB. You, in that step, you set it to 1 and then see whether it should really be 1 or not based on the result of the comparison. So then you update that value, set the next one to 1 and move on, okay? So this is how you can go through the whole thing. And finally, when you have gone through n steps, you will have the result of the conversion in the register and you simply read out the content of the register, that is the digital output. try to write down every step of this, it gets very messy. But I think the important thing is the logic, the binary search, and then this business of updating the register. I think it's very easy to see that this is what should be done, right? So in every step, that corresponding bit should be 1. All the following bit should be, all the lower bit should be 0. All the previous bit should be whatever was resolved in the previous steps, okay? And this register, it's called a successive approximation register and this type of an ADC is known as a successive because it uses that register successive approximation ADC or successive approximation register ADC and this itself is abbreviated to SAR. So you may keep hearing about SAR ADC and so on when uh, you see the literature. Okay. So essentially you have some state machine here. And this will receive some clock, which will decide how long each step is. And the state machine will look at Y and update these things. Okay. And once all the steps are uh, through, you will take this output and that is the output. Is this okay? Any questions here? This is a successful approximation register ADC. And because it takes N steps to resolve the input, it was generally thought of as useful for low speed applications, okay? But it turns out uh, today it is used for very high speed applications in a different way. It is still each SAR takes so many steps. So it is actually capable only of low speed. But it turns out in implementation, this can be really compact. So you can put many of them together, even hundreds to get high speed conversion, okay? Please think about this. This is the successive approximation ADC and uh, it includes a DAC. Now, in principle, the DAC can be made in any way. It doesn't matter. All the ways that you we have discussed, we can use here and we can use a comparator. But there is a particular implementation of a DAC using capacitors 
I mean, that is very convenient. Okay. And remember, this VI, I wrote it like this. This is not the continuous time output. This should be the because this VI, I'll call it uh, VI as such. So this should not change throughout the conversion, right? Because in every step of the conversion, we should be comparing the same sample. Okay. If you directly apply a continuous time signal here, you are finished. Because by the time it finishes one step and comes to the next one, the VI would have changed. That should not happen. So this is actually the sampled and held uh, input. And it should be held throughout the conversion, throughout the end conversion cycle. Okay. So it turns out there is a way of combining this whole thing. If we implement our track and hold and the DAC also with a capacitor, that we'll discuss in the next. Okay.